Can you cut a full 16 inch door hanger without a puzzle piece on the new Xtool S1 40 watt desktop diode laser? What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. Last video, we were super impressed with the new Xtool S1 40 watt diode desktop laser. This week, we're gonna take it to a whole other length. <laughs> That's because Extel Synthesis S1 Diode Laser, we tested it out last week, we loved it. They also sent us the conveyor feeder that goes with this. So not only does this machine run like a desktop laser, but it has so many accessories. It uses the RA2 rotary tool and it uses the automatic conveyor feeder system. So we really wanted to showcase the conveyor feeder system and see. And I think the best way to do that is go to our wheelhouse. Yeah. We're gonna try to see if we can make a full 16 inch door hanger on the desktop diode today. Step one, it's all about that base. <laughs> To use the conveyor system, you need to install the machine onto a riser base. So here you can see, I think the riser base is what, about four inches here? It's not that tall, but this will allow us to use the conveyor system and install the rails. This was super easy to install. The riser base came with four sections, the front, the back, and the two sides, and all I had to do was screw them together. The instruction said to leave the top left and bottom right screws loose until you put the machine on top of the base and then tighten them so you'll make well, sure it's nice and square. Yeah, they get it. It, it kind of clicks into place. You'll feel it settle into place. Next we had to screw it onto the base and what's interesting here is there's a safety feature and it will let you know if you did not install all six screws. I had trouble uh, installing one of the screws, I cross threaded it, That's I'm famous for cross threading. <laughs> so Garrett came over and he did the screw on the one side but never added the third screw on that side. And I didn't realize that until I went to do my first test cut and I had an error message saying that the riser base was not installed properly. So there is a little metal strip. Uh, yeah, each, each screw has like a little contact. Yes. And I think it'll actually complete a contact using the screw. It knew that I hadn't had all six screws installed. Step two, install the automatic conveyor feeder. This was also pretty simple. Now that we had the base installed, we just opened the front door and I'm able to slide the conveyor system on the proper- Like slots? Slot setting, yes. And then screw it in. You wanna add two screws on each side to make sure it's attached to the laser itself. And secure these well because this will be moving a board. A lot of jiggling. A lot of wiggling and jiggling. A lot of wiggling and jiggling. <laughs> now that the conveyor feeder is installed, we'll go ahead and assemble the conveyor feeder arms. Rails? Rails, yes. Yeah, guide rails. Guide rails. Kind of keeps your board level while it's sliding in and out. Now that the conveyor feeder is installed, I wanted to share a couple of more things about the conveyor feeder. These are the rails that are on, on the inside that are installed on the inside of the laser and attached to the conveyor feeder. You'll notice that this section here is open. This essentially is uh, like a tiny blade bed because this is your cutting area. Uh, the thing about when you click in and you select conveyor feeder, the laser then has a stationary cut area. It is about, what would you say, four inches? Yeah, I guess like three or four inches. By 19 and three quarters, that's the size of the bed. So everything moves and gets cut in this area right here. Kind of like a vinyl cutter. Yes, kind of like a vinyl cutter, that's a good point. So it only cuts here, which is different than your typical laser where the head moves all over the board. When you have the conveyor feeder installed, it only moves within this area right here. And the material moves the full length. That's right, the conveyor feeds the material through so it can cut the entire project in this space. Yeah, these pressure feet are motorized and that's what actually moves your board back and forth. So that's a little something I thought I would share because you may not know that about the conveyor feeder. Step three, it's test cut time. We have our test cut card from last week. It's nice and big so that we can't lose it. We already know what our settings are going to be from the test card. 
We're gonna use 85-7. I feel like that's safe. Right, this is where, yeah, it's right in here. Looks like it cut through perfectly. It's got a nice brown color. Not that's what we're charring. using. Yep. So this right here is your cut area inside the laser. And between this area here and the pressure feet, which actually move the material back and forth, that's 10 inches. So you're gonna need at least 10 inches of extra board so that the pressure feet have something to actually move the material with. Let's jump over to Xtool Creative Space to set up our cuts. Here we are in Creative Space. Let's start by changing from laser flat to conveyor feeder. And now you'll see that the top part of my canvas here has been shaded out. That is no longer a cut area. My cut area is now this space here. This big long space. It's like 19 and a half by almost 10 feet. All right, so let's go grab our project from the Creative Cloud. I don't want to save the project I'm in. It was blank. Oh, it reset my canvas. So let's turn my canvas into conveyor feed. Now this top part of this lands in the shaded area. So it's going to be outside of my cut area. We're going to have to move it down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the backer. So this is the backer. So the red are my cut lines, blue are my score lines. And this piece here is our backer. And this piece here is actually two pieces. This is the middle layer as the ornaments and these are the score marks for where the letters are gonna go. And then up here are my accents or my top layer. These are my pretty little ornaments and the words for the sign. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out our backer first. Then we're gonna flip the board and cut out our middle piece out of the same board. Then, once we have everything cut out, we'll change back to laser flat. Let's zoom out. And we'll grab this guy and we'll drag him back in because he fits right inside this area. We're just gonna use a regular laser board and cut him. All right, let's get back to business. Set it back to conveyor feed. Let's zoom out. We're going to move this down. And now, because I don't want it all to cut at one time, I'm going to take this middle layer and I'm going to move it off of the canvas. That way it won't try to cut it. It'll only cut this piece, which will allow us to flip the board. All right, now let's set our material thickness. Let's check it. We're going to use this bullseye over here to measure the actual thickness of the board. It's going to use that little pin. It's going to drop down, measure the board, go back and reset. There we go. 1.905. And I believe that's in centimeters, I think. So it's supposed to be about that much. Now let's do our material settings. Like I said, blue is our score marks. Red are our cuts, so let's start with our score. We're going to select the whole layer of blue. It's already set the score. We're going to use 50% power, 100 millimeters per second. We're going to leave it at one pass. Now I can't even change it. Now for our red layer, or our cut layer, we're going to go over, select cut. And then this, we're going to use 85% power, 7 millimeters per second. We're going to use the lower focus because we're using quarter inch MDF. It's a little bit thicker. We're going to lower the focus. So it's focusing on the center of the board, not the top of the board. Now, since we have the rails going, we don't want anything to fall through and block it or get caught on the laser head. So we're going to go ahead and do tab generation. We're going to do it by spacing, not by number. And 101 millimeters is about four inches. We're gonna leave the tab size a half a millimeter, and we're only gonna use 20% power when we're passing over those guys. All right, let's go ahead and frame this out. All right, framing looked good. Let's go ahead and run this sucker.
So with the automatic conveyor system installed and the riser base open in the front and back, the air purifier wasn't really doing much. It was having a hard time sucking the smoke out. So this thing was no longer enclosed. It was so smoky that the smoke alarm actually went off. So we ended up moving out to the workshop. Our test cut was unsuccessful. I think with all the smoke in the chamber, it kind of cut down the laser power. We're gonna either boost the power or slow it down and try it again. Test cut number two. We moved it outside and now we're just gonna back down the speed and run it again. I'm gonna select the red layer and I'm just gonna change the speed. I'm gonna take it down from seven to six millimeters per second. All right, let's run this sucker. So this time we were semi-successful. I was able to get the backer out. This is the backer, it looks great. Here's the board and it looks great. However, I used those settings on the top pieces here and I'm not able to get those all the way out, I, I partially. See, I can, I can push some of this out. Where am I at? I can push some of this out, but not all of it. Not down here at the bottom part of this. I can't really push that out. Well, I might be able to, but it's going to make a mess. it's almost through and right there at the bottom, it didn't come through. And I think that's because there might have been a slight bow in the board, you know, from hanging off. The either, either side. Well, I'm not even sure that's it, or maybe just from how we've had it stored or just how it came in. I think you could have bumped the power up instead of slowing it down. I would have bumped it up to maybe 90, even 100, just to make sure I got through. Yeah, I think because we're always using CO2 lasers and I'm thinking about preserving that uh, laser tube, tube yeah. and keeping the laser tube life I really thought about slowing the speed down rather than bumping up the power so I maybe could have cut this a little bit faster if I had increased the power there's a diode laser so you don't really have to worry about preserving that laser tube so we ran it a third time we slowed it down to five millimeters per second but we kept the power at 85 and it came out great and the tabs work great too. Yeah, it's just Little. barely hanging on in there. Just enough to pop it right out. And enough that I can get it out of the conveyor system and stay there. I can rotate it, put it back in. Well, I think, I think they're really great because if we learn with the P2 conveyor system, if you don't have the tabs, the pieces fall down and get caught. There you go. Yes, this this one's a little tricky because it has those long arms. Yeah. But you can pop them right out of there. I am really loving these tabs. Time to cut the top layer. And the top layer of our design will fit all on one desktop size laser board. So we don't need the conveyor anymore. That's right, we removed the conveyor system, closed up the front and back compartments here so that we can totally enclose the laser again. And because we did that, I decided to cut this at the same power settings we used last week and that we used for our test card, which was the 85.7. All right, so those pieces came out fine. Now let's go ahead and do the top layer. And now let's set our canvas back to a laser flat. Let's fit this in my cut area. All right, let's measure our new board. All right, our new board looks the same as our last. And since we moved it back inside, let's go ahead and uh, bump this speed back up to seven millimeters per second. We will leave 85% power, one pass. We have lower focus on, and this doesn't need any tabs because we're back to the honeycomb. All right, let's go. It worked great. Everything cut through smoothly. I did increase the airspeed to max airflow, just in case it wasn't getting enough um, air assist on the board as it was cutting, but everything went back to normal when I closed up the machine and it was able to extract that smoke a little more efficiently. And for this layer, 
We did not add the tabs. We didn't need them because we knew it was going to be on the honeycomb bed. So everything really just lifts right out. Like everything. These get a little intricate too. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. I mean, again, I am shocked that this is a diode laser getting through quarter inch so fast and so clean. So clean, yes. I'm super impressed. I was a little worried after the first conveyor feed that maybe I didn't have my settings right or uh, it wasn't as good as it was last week, but no, it's still great. I just needed to learn that the smoke made me either increase the power or slow the speed down just a little bit. Step four, time to paint and or stain. I'm quick. <laughs> so this is a new design for us. I don't know if you noticed. This is a new file we just released. Uh, we added a little stain, we added a little paint, and this thing came out perfectly. All cut on the X-Tool S1. I think this was a good design to put it through its paces. It's, right, it's a 16 inch round. And then it's got a lot of intricate details, so we'd really be able to tell if the laser wasn't able to get through, especially on these little circle pieces, or if it burned it up. But this guy did a great job. I am surprised at how well this thing does for being a diode laser. And I was so excited that we were able to successfully use that conveyor system. We learned a few things. Hopefully we saved you a little time and frustration because we give you some lessons learned about just backing that power down or backing the speed down, upping that power, and it'll cut through. It'll cut through great. It'll cut through great. And a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. And that is the best way to support this channel. Over on Patreon, we have Extra Files, a Kim and Dak. Big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. That's our hanger fam. <laughs> you can join us over on Patreon. That's the best way to support this channel. We have free files, a monthly Zoom call, a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast, and a super secret Facebook group. And if you join early, you can join us on our cruise in February oh, and meet everybody. That is right. <laughs> Be sure to hit that like button. If you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button and tick that bell to be notified of our new videos each week. And uh, we are, did I already say we're about out of time? Because I am definitely out of time. <laughs> so we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again.